Okay, uh, welcome to the RSA Herbarium. This is the Herbarium at California Botanic Garden. We are the third largest herbarium in California with over 1.2 million specimens. It's like, it's a library of pressed plants. I don't think it has anything to do with the her and the his. It's herb as in like a plant. <laughs> yeah. Um, you are standing here in the workroom. It's not really active at the moment, but we do have a lot of activity here. This is where specimens, herbarium specimens, uh, that come in and get processed uh, before they go up into the main collection, which I'll take you up there in a moment. Um, if you've never seen a specimen or what, what a specimen entails, so plant press with cardboards that separate all of the specimens that are pressed in newspaper. So a botanist will collect a specimen, press it and dry it, and place it in newspaper, and then later it will become identified, um, determined to the species. And then um, it will, once it's dried, it can be mounted. So specimens here have been mounted yesterday by one of our volunteers. So specimens whoop, get mounted and um, the parts of a specimen that you're looking at here are the actual specimen itself. Um, we have a collection label down in the lower right hand corner that indicates the determination of the species, um, where it was collected, some coordinates, some description about the plant and maybe uh, some habitat information and what other kinds of plants it was growing with, who collected it, and their collection number. We also have an accession number and then later we will also put a barcode on it. This specimen will get imaged and databased and then brought up into uh, the collection. All of the digital data will be uh, put onto our online database so that they are accessed by researchers, students, and the public. Should we go upstairs? So as I mentioned, uh, the collection, we have over 1.25 million specimens. We uh, have a, the best representation of Southern California plants. We're very strong in our representation of California species. Um, that's represented when you're looking inside a cabinet uh, by the buff folders. But we are also worldwide in scope, um, and that can be identified relatively easily by looking at the different colors of the folders here. So we have um, red that represents South America, green is Australia and the South Pacific Islands, um, brown is uh, European countries, Me Mexico is represented by blue, and the gray is um, North, the rest of North America outside of California. Um, so when you pull out a folder of specimens, um, here we have Lepicinia calicinia. You'll, have, you'll see that we have actually multiple specimens of a given species. And why would we want to collect multiple specimens of a given species? Well, there are many reasons for wanting to do this. One of them is to be able to document um, the distribution of that species, so we understand where this particular species is distributed. Specimens can then be used to understand morphology of a particular species. Now specimens can be used to take material, um, leaf material, uh, crush it up, and extract DNA in order to understand phylogenetic relationships uh, of a particular group or species or genus. We also have uh, a temporal aspect um, to the collection. So you can see here, these specimens were collected in 1927, and then the one below is collected in 1903. 
And so we actually have a temporal aspect um, to collecting specimens. So there are studies currently going on that are looking at how species are changing in their flowering and fruiting times, the phenology, and how that um, is changing as the climate warms. Um, so I pulled out a number of uh, specimens that I thought we could talk about, um, some that are really interesting um, in our collection. One of them is our, what we think is our oldest specimen, which was collected by the botanist Banks and Solander on Captain Cook's first voyage um, in 17, uh, 70, 1768 to 1771. I almost forgot. This specimen, um, just to talk a little bit about how species um, can go extirpated or extinct, extirpated meaning that they um, are extinct from a region. This particular species, Monodella pringlii, we have not seen since 1941. It's only known from two locations in Colton, California. So one important reason to have um, species uh, that we don't have representation of anymore is that if we do end up finding the, the species, we have this specimen that um, we can use for identification. But it also mark, importantly marks um, that this specimen occurred at this place at this time. And understanding diversity over time is really important. Some specimens are probably too big for an herbarium sheet, such as this echina cactus, polycephalus. Um, but we do uh, have specimens that are mounted this way and often end up getting contained in a box to better preserve them. So I just wanted to kind of highlight how um, uh, actually fun <laughs> this specimen is. So lastly, we have what's called a, a type collection. This is held in a different location in the herbarium. Um, type specimens are when uh, a botanist has discovered a species new to science and wants to name that plant. When you name a plant, you have to have a physical representation that goes with the name. And in this case, we have here an isotype, which is a duplicate of the D type, which is the holotype. We have uh, about 7,000 type specimens, and um, they are probably our most valuable specimens in the collection. Thanks for joining us today on our herbarium tour. We'll see you next time. <laughs>